Welcome back. My name is Suzanne Hobbs and I'm joined again by Nathan Whitaker, CEO of Stimulus Technologies, for the fourth part of our eight-part series on cybersecurity. Now, we talked in the last series about some statistics on cybersecurity. For my interviews and assessments with small businesses, I believe that most businesses have some type of protection in place that they think is sufficient. So what happens when they get hit? Let's say the business is infected with ransomware that is demanding tens of thousands of dollars in payment to unlock their files. What should the business have in place if all their security mechanisms fail and the hacker still gets in? Hopefully they have a plan in place in case that happens. They can pull that plan off the shelf, hopefully they have a paper copy of it because their systems are down, and execute the plan. From what you've described about small businesses, it sounds like many of them wouldn't have a plan put together. So what should they do in those instances, or at least have in place? If they don't have a plan and they don't have backups that they can recover data from, they are most likely going to have to pay the ransom. I'm not condoning paying the ransom, but sometimes that is what a business must do to survive. These hackers know that if they get a reputation of not unlocking the files, no one will pay the ransom payments again. So they provide good customer service, immediate response to payment, and unlock the files. Should the business do anything more than just pay the ransom and unlock the files? That seems dangerous. It is. The hackers got in some way. There is some email account, user account, backdoor, something on the network that allowed the hacker to access the systems. No matter what happens, my recommendation is to bring in a security professional and your IT professionals to find out how the hackers access the system find any data that they might have access to and take appropriate corrective action. I would feel violated if that happened to me. It's like somebody broke into my house and locked everything up and held the key until I paid them. That is exactly what it is and worse because it is very difficult to know exactly how they access the system. Many times we recommend rebuilding the network from scratch. New systems, new user accounts, new passwords, etc could be built to ensure vulnerabilities are closed. How much does that cost a business? That average loss reported to the FBI is around $80,000, plus any additional lost revenue, damages, fines, and fees associated with the event. Remember, in a cyber attack, the victim is usually blamed, which is unfortunate. Is there a way that a business can avoid paying the ransom and start from scratch? So with what we call business continuity appliances or disaster recovery systems, a business can be back up and running in a short amount of time. That sounds like technical terms for backups. Is having some type of backup system enough protection for a business? That depends. We use two terms that business owners have probably never heard of, but should be aware of. Recovery time objective, or RTO, and recovery point objective, or RPO. Most businesses today have large amounts of data, usually measured in terabytes. Let's say a business has 10 terabytes of data on their network and they're using a cloud-based file backup provider. To recover from a ransomware attack, the IT professional decides to rebuild the server and restore from backup. The server rebuild will probably take about six to eight hours, plus getting all their computers set back up on the network. Additionally, if the company has a 100 megabit per second internet connection, it will take approximately 220 hours or about nine days to download all their data from the internet. Their anticipated recovery time objective is 10 days. I was reading a case like that recently. The news reported that Hancock Healthcare in Indiana paid $55,000 to hackers to recover their files rather than restoring backups. Hancock CEO Steve Long said the affected files were backed up and couldn't have been recovered, but restoring them would take days, maybe even weeks, and it would be costly. Why would a business implement a backup system that would take weeks to recover data? Because of perceived cost, file level backups were enough protection when data was small and before ransomware. Today, businesses need to implement business continuity systems that allow for faster recovery. These systems are redundant servers, sometimes stored off-site, sometimes on-site, that replicate their current servers. They are also kept separately from the main system so that they should not be affected by an attack. In the event of ransomware, theft, or any other data destruction, they usually can be back online within a few minutes or maybe even hours. It sounds expensive up front, but well worth the insurance. Actually, the cost of implementing these types of systems are coming down in price. You're right, in the past, they could have cost a business double or even triple for the infrastructure. Today, they are significantly less expensive and can often be paid as a monthly service with little upfront cost. You mentioned recovery point objective also. What does that mean? RPO is basically how far you can go back for recovery. For example, if a user deletes a file and six months go by until someone notices that file doesn't exist, can the backups go back far enough to retrieve that file? 
The longer the recovery point objective, the more storage you will need to keep changes and deletions to the files. Fortunately, storage is cheap today and continually decreases in price. So I generally recommend businesses keep up to five years of history, which generally makes any government auditor or regulator happy. It seems to mean that business owners watching this today are going to have a conversation with their IT professionals about business continuity. It's an insurance policy that no business should go without. Thank you, Nathan.